the objective, please, Geo. Everybody on three, one, two, three. Okay, so, so far we've already solved and graphed quadratic equations. Um, and we know how to use the vert, uh, I mean the intercepts to uh, graph. Today, what's new is the term vertex. We've already introduced it some time back. I mentioned it very briefly. Today we're going to go ahead and just cover that to add to our tool in regards to graphing. So, once you copy the objective on the left side, on the Q side, I want you to write the term vertex. Let me zoom in. So on the Q side, you're going to write vertex. And the definition is the highest or lowest point on the parabola. In case you forgot what the parabola is, is a graph of the quadratic equation. When we introduced, uh, remember when we introduced um, quadratic equations with graphing, that I did the introduction with a roller coaster. You guys remember that? Yeah. And then from there, I showed you pictures of different places where they use the, uh, the the quadratic equation. One of those was the antenna. You guys remember the dish antennas? No. And then I, I didn't. Yeah, remember the pictures I showed you for the dish? Yeah. Yeah. And I said how the satellite works. The satellite sends signals. The dish receives the signal. Anyways, and those antennas that look something like this receive, receive uh, signals. And this form right here is because of the quadratic equation. And it looks like this. That's why it's known as a parabolic antenna, also known as a parabola. OK? So by now, we should be uh, already experts at what quadratic equations are. Is that correct? Because today, we're kind of like bringing to a close everything that we've learned so far for that. So in your Fourier model, you're going to write quadratic equations. And without looking at your notes, you're going to fill out your definition. One example, one non-example, and a couple of hashtags for the critical attributes. So copy that and do that by yourself. I'll give you guys a little bit of time. Ready? Go. So your fair model should look something like that. Is that correct? Yeah. OK. So here goes, uh, run underneath your fair model, right steps. Here they go. I knew it. I knew it. That's right. You're going to have to come up with your steps. By now, you should be able to come up with steps. I know. You, you can do that by yourself, right? Here we go. Pay attention, please. Um, set your uh, iPad to one side and get a graph paper in front of you. The coordinate plane should be on your left-hand side. If you put it on your right-hand side, then it's going to be upside down. And write example one. Now, like I said, uh, today is going to be looking at graphing, uh, solving, and using other components. And uh, you're going to see how everything we've seen, it, it all comes together here, except for uh, we're going to add a couple more things. But other than that, everything should be able to, uh, we should be able to solve this uh, with no problem. So here we go. Example one says solve and graph using the vertex and intercepts. So everyone should know that the first step to solving a quadratic equation is? Form. Is it in standard form, everyone? Yes. yes. OK. So now, who noticed that my graph is on my right-hand side? Yours is on the left-hand side. Yes. But then you wrote this right there. Do you have space on the right right hand side of your paper? Okay, I want you to write 
on the right hand side step two and I'm gonna write the word predictions now we're gonna use just uh, information that's given and that's obvious to kind of like uh, have a prediction as to what our parabola is going to look like. So, so first of all, by looking at this equation, tell your neighbor what is obvious information given from here. Go. It's going to be a happy face. It's going to be a smiley face. It's going to be a smile. What's the actual way to ask for being like happy? It's going to be a dog. Okay, who can give us the, the first piece of information? Hannah. The parabola will be a happy face, also known opening upward. Yes? So, and how do we know that, everyone? The coefficient is a positive. Okay, so that's the first thing we know. So, our parabola is going to open up. Okay? Or a, a happy face. What's another obvious thing or fact that we can get from this equation? Tell your neighbor, please. Everyone, the y-intercept, and that is negative 5. So our parabola is going to cross at negative 5. So now there's a third thing that we can predict using some of the information from the equation, but for that we're going to need our quadratic formula, x equals minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, this quadratic uh, formula we use to solve the equation, yes? yes? But right now, I'm not going to use it to solve the equation. I'm going to use it to find out how many roots or how many solutions I'm going to get. And I'm going to use only this part. Look up. This part right here. This is what we call the discriminant discriminant. And that discriminant, whenever I ask you write the discriminant, please, you're going to write b squared minus 4ac. Okay? And with that, do we know how to substitute values in there given this equation? Yeah. Tell you never what you're going to write right underneath once it's substituted, please. It's going to be 4 minus 4. Okay. Help me out, please, uh, Brian. What? what do I write underneath? Um, 4 squared minus 4 uh, times 1 times negative 5. Hands if you got that. Yeah. That is correct, because now we know how to get the information from there. Now, what are, what are we going to do? We're going to simplify this as much as possible. Now, check this out. The discriminant works up like as follows. If we end up with a positive number, therefore we know that we're going to have two roots. If we end up with a negative number, we know we're going to have zero roots. And if we end up with a zero, that's the only option, therefore we're going to have one root. Let's see what are the options. We either end up with a positive number a negative number or zero. Those are the only three options. Is that correct? Now, this, if it's a positive, two roots, negative, zero roots, or zero, one root. Let's see. But it's 4 squared, 16. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 5. That's positive 20. 16 plus 20, 30. Negative 4 times negative 5, that's positive 20. How many roots are we getting? Two. Two. Everybody see how that works? Yes. So, so with our predictions, now up to right there we know a lot of information. Number one, it's opening up. Number two, it is crossing the x-axis twice. Is that correct? Yes. And then we know our y-intercept is negative 5. So we have a lot of information already. So like that, when we graph, we now have more of a concrete way of looking at it and not making all these funky graphs that I've I seen some of you make. I was like, man, what happened here? Some of you were like, like really off. So anyways, any questions with predictions? Okay, let's go to step three. 
For step three, let's solve. Yeah. What's the point of giving the prediction? Uh, I just want you to understand how to use parts of the uh, the quadratic formula. And right now, we only use what part? The discriminant. The discriminant. And right now, that's what we're going to use so far. But we're also going to use the other part that we haven't used in a little bit. And I'll show you that how we can use that. So question. What method do you guys want to use to solve so that we can find our x intercept? Factor. Factor? OK, let's do that. Let's do that together. Let's use factor, yeah? Yeah. OK, substitute y for 0. That is x squared plus 4x minus 5. Next step, Beto. What? That's right. Factor. So what do I do? The x. Okay, so the only factors of 5 are 1 and 5, but one of them has to be negative. Negative 1. That is correct. So let's rewrite this. We got 0 equals x squared minus 1x plus 5x minus 5. Continue. Lisa? Group. So what is my GCF for these two? And we're left with GCF for those two. And we're left with? Adam, so my factors are what? My factors? Oh, sorry. What are my factors? And all that equal to zero. So your neighbor, the property that's next after that. Yeah, you guys got it. Okay. So what do I write, Matthew? Zero equals x minus one, and we solve. So therefore plus 1 plus 1, 1 equals x, minus 5 minus 5, negative 5 equals x. These are my roots, x-intercepts, zeros, solutions. OK. So let's see. The instructions were solve. Did we solve it already? Yes, but then it says graph using the vertex and intercepts. Do we have all our intercepts? Yes, yes our x-intercept and our y-intercept. Now the only thing that we're missing is what? The vertex. the vertex. So let me show you really quick how to get the vertex. Look up to the screen, please. To get the vertex, I'm going to write vertex. And that's the what? What was the definition? The highest or lowest point. But the key word is point. Therefore, we need what? A coordinate. We need an x value and a y, y value. Let me show you how to get the x value first. And I'm going to use the part, and as Caleb was saying, what is the point of using the quadratic formula? Because I wanted you to see the other part that can be used also. Look up. I'm going to use this part, which is the beginning part of the quadratic formula. And I'm going to write x equals minus b over 2a. This is going to give me the x value of the vertex. Did everybody see where I got it from? And I usually tell my students, this is the, uh, I call it the California roll, because it looks kind of like a Calif California roll. No? OK, never mind. Be nice. So what is, uh, what is b, everyone? So this is negative 4 over 2 times a, which is 1. This is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. There it is. OK, we got the x value. OK, look up, please. This is going to take a little bit of uh, thinking through. Let me zoom out. 
we were given this problem right here. We found the y-intercept. We found how many roots we were going to get. We found our x-intercepts. We have the x value for the vertex. Now we just need the y value. Talk it over to your neighbor and see what we need to do to find the y value of that vertex. Okay, but we have to Hey, extra credit, Brian. Just <laughs> 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 Substitute the x value to the original equation. So the original equation is y equals parentheses squared plus 4 parentheses minus 5. And instead of x, we write negative 2. So negative 2 squared, that's 4. 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. Bring down the negative 5. Combine like terms, this becomes negative 13 plus 4. So what is y, everyone? Negative 9. Negative 9. That goes right here, negative 9. All right. Now that we have that information, let's plot our, our given information. Our roots, we said, are 1 and negative 5. What was our y-intercept again? Negative 5. Okay, it goes right here. What is our vertex? Negative 2, negative 9, which is right here. Now can you picture, without graphing it yet, can you picture the parabola already? Yes. You can see it, right? However, not quite clearly because we still could maybe put some more points. So watch. Let me show you this. Sometime back, I had introduced or talked about the line of symmetry. Here we go. And the line of symmetry goes through the vertex. Do you see how I drew here the dotted line? Yes. Now, an easier way of remembering this is that us, our bodies, we have a line of symmetry that goes straight through the middle right here. And you can think of our vertex to be our nose. So think about the line of symmetry going straight through like this. Well, guess what? Your eye, this eye, is exactly the same distance from the line of symmetry than this eye. Your ear, the same thing. It's the same distance from here to here, from here to here. With that same idea, look up. This line of symmetry gives us same reflections. Watch. How many steps is this point away from the line of symmetry? One, two, three. Therefore, obviously, we're going to have a point one, two, three points away from that. So therefore, look up. Look at the y-intercept. How many steps is it away from the line of symmetry? So can you tell your neighbor the coordinate of the missing point from the left side, please? That is correct. It's negative 4, negative 5. And now we have enough points to graph our parabola and make it as smooth as we can, right? So we go from left to right. And that's how we graph our parabola using the intercepts, the vertex, and a reflected point from the line of symmetry. Also, the line of symmetry is also known as the axis of symmetry, OK? Tell me those fingers how comfortable you are with this so far. I got some threes, threes, fives, fours, fives, fours, threes, five, four, 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 four. Okay. All right. So let's look at uh, how beautiful this looks. So what is new today? The only thing is the prediction. So we're starting to read the characteristics of our quadratic equation and how our problem is going to turn out and the vertex. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to leave that up there for right now. But on your iPad, I'm going to forward the screen so that you can do problem number two. Turn your paper over. 
And there it is, y equals x squared plus 6x plus 8 on your screen. Copy that. And see if he can start off, once again, do the prediction to see how many roots we're going to get. Solve whichever method you want to use. From there, get the vertex, graph, sketch your line of symmetry, and give me an extra point, the one that's going to be missing, reflected from the other points. Okay? Ready? Go. Copy that, and I'll give you a couple minutes ahead start, and then I'm going to ask people to help me out. Okay? Go. Here we go. I'm going to start you with a first step. There you go. What was the first step? Form. Standard form. I know. That's why I put the first step. Thank you, You're welcome. Step two. We're going to make some predictions here. Uh, Jay Millette, which way is it going to open up or down? Gonna open up, thank you. Uh, Jillian, what's her y intercept? Eight, that is correct. And how many roots are we getting from here, Darren? Two roots, tell me what you wrote for that. Yeah, what, what did you use to predict that? So that becomes 36 minus 32, which is 4. Oh, sorry. 4. Hands if you got it to right there. And yeah, that's two roots because it's a positive. Thank you. So, uh, which method are you using to solve this, uh, Matthew? Power range, so factoring. Okay, so tell me what to write. Continue, Maya. And the factors are? So we write 0 equals x squared plus 2x plus 4x plus 8. Continue, Lillier. Uh, no, what, what I do from here. Okay. So GCF is? Okay. Continue. Jasmine, what do I write? Oh, sorry. Parentheses x plus 2. Now that equal to 0. All right, then from there, ZPP, yes? 0 equals x plus 2, or... 0 equals x plus 4, subtract 4, subtract 4, negative 4 equals x, minus 2, minus 2, negative 2 equals x. These are my roots, zeros, x-intercepts, solutions. Okay, vertex. Tell me what to write, um, Axel. What, what is my formula for that? Negative B. X equals negative B over 2A. And what did you write for substitution? Negative 6 over 2 times 1, which is 2, yeah. So this is negative 6. That is negative 3. Hands if you got negative 3 for your X value of the vertex. Okay. Continue, Lily. What do I do? Oh. We're at, uh, we just found the x value for the vertex. So what do I do from there? So y equals parentheses squared. Um, what else was the middle term? Six. Oh, 6x. So 
plus 6 parentheses plus 8, and I substitute the value of the negative 3. So that is y equals 9 minus 18 plus 8. Combine like terms, y equals 17 minus 18, y equals negative 1, and that is my vertex. Hence, if you got that, okay? Let me plot it really quick before we go. Negative 3, negative 1. Let me zoom in. Negative 4 for the 0, and then the other one's negative 2. And our y-intercept was 8. The line of symmetry goes through the vertex. And Hannah, what was the other point missing on the left-hand side for that graph? Negative 6, 8. Hands, have you got that? That is correct. That goes through there. And for home plate tonight, it's on page 617. You're only going to do odds. However, there's five problems there. I only want two of them done like this. Does everyone does understand? No. Okay. Two of those five problems from page 617, I want them done like this, all the way through graphing with a vertex and intercepts. And the other three, whichever way they're asking for. Everybody got it? Have a good one, guys. Enjoy your home play. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.